Today on the Topic Show, Donald J. Trump is confirmed to be the 47th President of the United States. We review his succession speech as well as his state-by-state breakdown. TGI Fridays files for bankruptcy. The Olympic boxer is confirmed to be a biological man. And Optics Planet has a scandal where they accidentally shipped and sold a new product while it turned out to be used. All of that much more on the Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. I can see their founder at least twice a day. I can see he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me. See, that's the joke. If you're an IT leader or business owner, you can reach out to the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, still giving away a free flamethrower with every IT purchase. Go to toppingtechnologies.com to learn more. Literally have flamethrower on the top banner page to learn more. Lastly, trying to get 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you can click that button and tell your friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the Business Prime Podcast, you have some sad but good news. TGI Fridays is confirmed to be going through bankruptcy. Now, I say this is sad but good news because one of those instances where they will be emerging from bankruptcy, so they're going to resell their debts, and I think they're going to be, they'll emerge stronger and better positioned for long-term success, very similar to how we saw recently with the bankruptcy of Red Lobster. Now, this comes to us thanks to Culture Map Dallas. There you can see the iconic TGI Fridays nomenclature, which... I keep forgetting they actually changed all the signs, so just as Fridays, which, eh, interesting market choice. Now, this is also known to us thanks to the Associated Press. They say, quote, TGI Fridays files for bankruptcy, all six Dallas locations now closed. They say that the restaurant chain has filed for bankruptcy protection on November 2nd, saying that they are looking for ways to, quote, ensure long-term viability, quote, unquote, as a casual dining brand closes many of its branches subsequently to this in early 2024. The Dallas-based company, Chapter 11 filing, a Texas federal court de- accelerates a gradual decline for an iconic chain that was once a clear center of American pop culture, but has seen its customer base dwindle as tastes change. Now, they say TGI Friday's executive chairman, Rohit, said in a statement that the challenges were a result of COVID-19, which, that's what they're saying. He's uh, saying those words, but, um, yeah, spoiler, if you look at the financing, look at who owns TGI Friday's, spoiler alert, it's a, uh, yeah, looked at, uh, it's a private equity that owns the company, which, not all the times, but many times is a source of contention with the acquisition of a company where they usually want to milk them for all it's worth. I mean, Toys R Us was one of the most iconic famous toy stores I mean, in history. And one of the issues towards the end of their life was they got acquired by private equity and they melted for all they were worth. And now they're gone with basically one or two stores and just a shadow of what it used to be. Now, the key CEO says, a quote, the chairman, he says, the next steps announced today are difficult but necessary actions to protect the best interests of the stakeholders, including our domestic and international franchises and our valued team members around the world. The primary driver of our financial challenges resulted from, yeah, resulted from the pandemic and our capital structure. Aha, uh-huh, there's the second more important part. This restructuring will allow us to go forward, restaurants to proceed with an optimized corporate infrastructure that enables them to reach their full potential, which... Sure sounds like fancy corporate speak for we're going to make some changes so it's more profitable. Because right now, they're obviously losing money. They also know that until we- recently, Dallas-Fort Worth had 11 locations, including five at DFW Airport. These airport locations are the only ones still open. The remaining six are all now closed. Some closures are very recent, most after being in business for over a decade or more, which is heartbreaking if you were working there. They know that a couple of locations in Plano as well as Garland. Oh, wow, a couple more closed down as well. Now they know that it was uh, privately owned by Tri Artisan Capital Advisors. Yeah. TGI Fridays has been beloved dining destination since its inaugural bar opened in Manhattan in 1965. Expanded over the following decades to become a ubiquitous suburban gathering spot known for its ribs, which I never thought they were known for that, but some people are good, I guess, do. Potato skins topped with cheese and bacon, uh, and decor bedecked with red stripes and Tiffany style lamps, which I do remember those from my childhood. I think that's a little bit more signature, kind of the brand on them. They say the company has boasted its bartenders trained... Why would they, why would they brag about this? The company has boasted that its bartenders trained Tom Cruise's role, role in 1988 film Cocktail while serving fast bourbon-filled, uh, buttoned-filled filled uniforms meant to invoke a fun atmosphere. They are produced a parody in a 1990 satire of Office Space starring Jennifer Aniston. It looks like the Empire peaked in 2008 with 601 locations in the United States and $2 billion in business, according to Kevin Sheath, the Director of Industry Research at Technomic. In sales, there were 200, sorry, $728 million in 2023, 
down 13% from a year prior, according to that same analytical company. They noted it now counts 163 restaurants in the U.S., down from 269 last year and 213 from a week ago, which, yeah, that's rough. Closed 32 locations in January, dozens more the past week. And they say that TGI Fridays is not only owns operates 39 restaurants, which, again, is only a fraction. There are still 461 TGI Friday locations, but those are franchise-owned, very similar to McDonald's, being the most famous fast food or food franchise in history. Now... Well, it'll be interesting to see how they emerge from this. Hopefully, they're able to emerge more successful and a little bit more streamlined. And hopefully, not too many people are displaced from their jobs. But it's kind of sad. What I mean, it was an iconic restaurant for decades. But again, I think it's not just a, you know, the pandemic's been a couple of years. I think one of the biggest issues right now is disposable income. I mean, it's been a rough couple of years for a lot of folks, especially middle class. And there's not, and folks just really weren't getting much of a break. One of the easiest things to cut for your budget. There's a you know a lot of things. A lot of things are fixed in your budget. You think your, your car insurance, your rent, uh, your electricity. You, those are pretty much locked in. But one of the biggest things and variables you can control is your grocery bill as well as when you're eating out. It's one of the easiest things to just cut from the budget during these tough times. I'm again, I'm not too surprised that things got a little bit more difficult at TGI Fridays. And again, hopefully, wish them the best. Hope they are the emerged and starting them before. But let me know in the comments. When was the last time you actually ate at a TGI Fridays? Do you have a good memory of it? Let me know because, as always, be fancy to hear what you have to say. Now, going over to the Culture Part Podcast, you have an Olympic boxer confirmed to be a man with a... Yeah, if you take a look at this individual for a fraction of a second, you'd probably say, uh, yeah, duh. Because, well, yes. Now, pulling up this individual, this comes to us thanks to Bricks News. Though they're not passionate about the actual Bricks. It's actually a bunch of countries amalgamated together. So it's that, don't get excited if you're a mason if you're a masonry enthusiast, not that types of bricks. Now they say, quote, Justin, Algerian boxer, I'm definitely gonna butcher this name, but in this case I don't care, Iman Kiaf, who won gold at Paris in the Olympics and women's boxing, has been confirmed to be a man, according to a medical report. And again, look at with Adam's apple, the biceps, like the nose, the face, the skull. I'm not sure how mentally vacuous or inebriated you have to be to look at this picture and not think, oh yeah, that's a dude. Ble- little sweating testosterone, like Jesus, it's like a short Hulk. Look at the smile. Got more teeth than you can count. That's ridiculous. And so pretty well. I got thirteen point two million views and one hundred and four thousand likes. Wow. Let's see here. One of the first comments comes from Global Statistics, saying, "Quote: We knew it all along. You could run away from reality, but you can't hide it. Getting two point four thousand likes." Mark Jackson says, now arrest him on assault charges, getting 11,000 likes, which, yep, they should. Mariana says, he had the audacity to sue Elon Musk for saying the truth, getting 5.1 thousand likes. Let's see. A couple more caricatures of cartoons of the Paris Olympics, where it's basically a bull for, caricature of a bull versus a little girl, getting 4,000 likes. As a picture of him after he assaulted the crap out of that little gal. Like, look at how much more petite the real woman looks compared to the man. It's ridiculous. This is a post from Global Informer saying Italian boxer Ang- uh, Angela Cariani should be given the gold medal, which, yeah, she should. She deserves it. Got 7.6 thousand likes. Here you can see the actual, here's a video of this uh, hulking guy. Let's see here. Comes to us thanks to, yes, actually, I think there's another post for this. Comes to us thanks to Oil London saying, quote, the Olympics wanted you to believe this is a woman. Iman Keefe was, was allowed to beat up a woman and claim a gold medal. Those who stood up against this injustice were called racist. Now medical reports reveal Iman Kaif's is in fact a male. And here you can see him hulking around. Look at that frame. It's ridiculous. It's comical. Wearing jeans and a shirt like a dude. Wearing a briefcase also. to vote or something, he gave a gal a piece of paper. Ridiculous. And also got 10.3 million views as well as 110,000 likes. Wow. Let's see, scrolling down more and more to the comments section here. Mary Garrel says, the fact that, quote, quote, she is walking around without wearing a hijab makes it pretty obvious, they, obvious that they allowed they all knew that she isn't a woman getting 7,000 likes, not 1,000, 7,000 likes. 
empathy. Emma Rock says, it walks like a man, it talks like a man, it looks like a man, it speaks like a man, dresses like a man, behaves like a man. It probably is a man. Get 1.9 thousand likes. Scrolling down more and more. <laughs> that is a picture. Someone photoshopped the, uh, the ginormous boxer. They added the text, white dudes for Harris. It says, the this uh, person, uh, Weenie Weenie, says, shocker, the Democrats sure went nuts defending this guy. Yeah, they did. Okay. 364 likes. A couple more pictures. That individual with the galley beat up in the Olympics. Heck, they even had a picture of... The, yeah. <laughs> Someone had a picture of him at the gym when he was running like one of those Speedo things, which... Obvious. I mean, of all the pictures, that's the most obvious one. That's a man. Creature of Habit says, Anyone with eyes and a functioning brain knew that. When will he be uh, returning his medals? Well, soon, hopefully. I got 211 likes. Right here. Speaking of, if you can go ahead and take the time to like this video, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm perhaps, my speaking skills are perhaps not as sharp and articulate as they normally are. I uh, did not sleep today, which again, I appreciate everyone's patience. Why this episode is late being published today. So I pulled an all nighter for the live stream. And again, especially if you appreciate people taking time to tune into that and comment as well. See here. So, not too many contrarian statements here. I mean, again, there are some people in San Francisco who will probably defend this individual till the day they die for no reasons. But yeah. Interesting. Hopefully we see more, some more sanity sanity return to the world. But let me know your thoughts, because as always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Now going over to the political part of the podcast here, Donald J. Trump confirmed to be the 47th president of the United States. Now becoming the second president in U.S. history to serve two non-consecutive terms. Prior to him, it was over only Grover Cleveland making records left and right. Now, before we jump into his speech, I wanted to jump to the statistics and pull up the map here really quick. Of course, you have the utter ineptitudes or corruption of Arizona with Maricopa County, which is only now known for being a county in Arizona and being woefully inept or corrupt. It's taking them how many hours? And there's a day, like, yeah, hours. And it's still, what is it? Only 63% of votes in Arizona have been counted. They got a snail's pace. That being said, 51% or 51.9% went in favor of Donald Trump. Now, in terms of the states that were interesting, that, you know, really the biggest ones, is, you know, the swings... Uh, good old Iowa went full Trump, 55.8% for Trump, 42% for Kamala Harrison, Iowa. Go Hawks. Now, Wisconsin, that was pretty big delta. That was 49.6% for Donald Trump and 48.8% for Kamala Harris. Michigan, that was, let's see, pull that up here. That, well, interesting overnight, it got a little bit closer. Now, didn't it? Now, it comes at, lose me at the moment, let me pull it up here really quick. Now, in Michigan, you got it at 49.8% for Donald Trump and 48.3% for Kamal Harris, which, again, the biggest delta, I think, was automotive workers. Again, the union, the union, you know, the, the teams, are, not the teams, the unions, the United Auto Workers Union, well, obviously, they're, the members are rather more accurately the leadership, you know, Sean Fain, that Marxist, they're going to go for, you know, Kamal Harris and donate to Democrats because they've done that for decades. But the men who actually wrench, you know, turn a wrench for a living and several cars, yeah, they want Donald Trump because he said day one he's going to get rid of that EV mandate. And get so you can actually make good old V8s, make America great again with three pedals, six shifts, hopefully. And in all seriousness, a lot of the union members want those because internal combustion engines not only do is American manufacturing on average make it a lot better than competition, make the V8 great again, but it's also much more profitable for these companies. Ford lost $132,000 per EV sold Q3. And some of these union members, they get, they, I mean, they get revenue shares and profit shares. So they have incentives to make more profitable vehicles. EVs are less profitable for a long time. And they require less um, simple labor to create and less pieces to create. So there's a lot of disincentive why the unions would not like them. So I think the actual union members, I think that was one of the reasons why they really aimed Trump this time around in Michigan. Now, another swing state, obviously the biggest one everyone kept talking about was Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, Trump came in strong at 50.5% compared to Kamala Harris at 48.4%. And somehow some 32,000 people still voted for Chris Oliver or Chase Oliver. It's ridiculous. The worst libertarian candidate of my life. And there you got some good ones, but yeah, obviously the real libertarians are supporting, you know, I think a lot of them were RFK Jr. And then he subsequently joined the Trump train. So Pennsylvania did go to Trump, which again, that was one of the biggest speculations. Another one that was big was North Carolina. That came for Trump at 51% compared to 47.7% for Kamala Harris. That was another big win. Another big one was going to be Georgia. That came in at 50.7% for Donald Trump compared to 48.4% for Kamala Harris. Now, interestingly enough, 
Go to California. Eh? I don't know why Republicans still live there. 3.9 million. No, 3.9 million. Yeah, yeah. 3.9 million Republicans cast their vote in California. Eh? Again, if they all just moved to swing state, the country would be red for decades. Well, I was about to, be, about to say for decades. The caveat it is if you actually deport all the illegals that the Biden administration had, you know, imported the past couple of years. Now, you also have another breakdown is, you know, 58% to 30 or almost 39% in California. Just about there. So, yeah, those are, I was going to say, those are kind of the top, top coin tosses or the swing states as well as kind of cliche ones. So, a couple surprises. And again, it was uh, nail biters for quite some time in Wisconsin. And yeah, a lot of people were speculating. And I stayed up to what, 3 30 in the morning with this? I would live stream. Because again, I was wondering how many of those big, I mean, how many of those ballots, those trucks might come in at 3 in the morning again, just all be for Biden. And thank God it looks like none of them did. Now, let's go to something. Let's go to a voice infinitely more eloquent than mine. Let's go to go, go ahead to Donald J. Trump with his acceptance speech. It's a little bit long, but. Against Trump, why not? I mean, I have all the things listed to right now. I mean, literally history being made. Let's go ahead and tune in to hear what he has to say. Again, appreciate your patience as I'm perhaps not quite as articulate as I normally am since I have no sleep today. But nevertheless, I partially digress. The OG Trump. We overcame obstacles that nobody thought possible, and it is now clear that we've achieved the most incredible political thing. Look what happened. Is this crazy? Yep. But it's a political victory that our country has never seen before, nothing like this. I want to thank the American people for the extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th president and your 45th president. The first task is Grover Cleveland. every citizen, I will fight for you, for your family and your future. Every single day, I will be fighting for you. And with every breath in my body. I will not rest until we have delivered the strong, safe, and prosperous America that our children deserve and that you deserve. This will truly be the golden age of America. That's what we have to have. This is a magnificent victory for the American people that will allow us to Make America great again. Oh, While other networks lie to you about what's happening. We stand and say, Level of importance because we're go. going to help our country heal. We're going to help our country heal. We have a country that needs help, and it needs help very badly. We're going to fix our borders. We're going to fix everything about our country. And we made history for a reason tonight, and the reason is going to be just that. We overcame obstacles that nobody thought possible, and it is now clear that we've achieved the most incredible political thing. Look what happened. Is this crazy? But it's a political victory that our country has never seen before, nothing like this. I want to thank the American people for the extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th president and your 45th president. And every citizen, I will fight for you, for your family and your future. Every single day, I will be fighting for you. And with every breath in my body. I will not rest until we have delivered the strong, safe, and prosperous America that our children deserve and that you deserve. This will truly be the golden age of America. That's what we have to have. This is a magnificent victory for the American people that will allow us to Make America great again. Oh, okay. And in addition to having won the battleground states of North Carolina, I love these places. Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Yep, in Michigan. We are now winning in Michigan, Arizona, Nevada, and Alaska, which would 
result in us carrying at least 315 electoral votes. But that But it's much easier doing what the networks did or whoever called it because there was no other path. There was no other path to victory. We also have won the popular vote. That was great. Well, apparently it's the first time in 20 years. 20 years since the Republican won the popular vote. Now the popular vote, that came in at Trump at 71.88 million votes. We had Kamala Harris at 67 million votes, which, again, that's still a lot of votes for someone who didn't have a policy and really didn't do much to help American people the past three and a half, four years. But nevertheless, still 71.88 million votes for Donald Trump. That's insanely good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you know, winning the popular rally. vote was very nice, very nice, I will tell you. It's a great, a great feeling of love. We have a great feeling of love in this very large room with unbelievable people standing by my side. These people have been incredible. They've made the journey with me, and we're going to make you very happy. We're going to make you very proud of your vote. I hope that you're going to be looking back someday and say that was one of the truly important moments of my life when I voted for this group of people beyond the president, this group of great people. America has given us an unprecedented and powerful mandate. We have taken back control of the Senate. Wow, that's good. And the Senate races in Montana, Nevada, Texas, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We're all won by the MAGA movement. They helped so much. And in those cases, every one of them, we worked with the senators. They were tough races. And I mean, the, the number of victories in the Senate was absolutely incredible. And we did teller rallies. We did teller rallies with each one of them. And sometimes we did two or three for, and it was amazing to look at all of those victories. Nobody expected that, nobody. So I just wanted to thank you very much for that. And we have, you have some great senators and some great new senators. And it also looks like we'll be keeping control of the House of Representatives. And I want to thank Mike Johnson. I think he's doing a terrific job. Terrific job. I want to also thank my beautiful wife, Melania, First Lady. <laughs> who has the number one best-selling book in the country. Can you believe that? Oh, no, she's done a great job, works very hard, works very hard to help people. So I just want to thank her. But I want to thank my whole family, my amazing children, and they are amazing children. Now, we all think our children are amazing. Everybody here thinks their children are amazing, but that's a good thing when you think they are. But Don, Eric, Ivanka, Tiffany, Baron, Laura, Jared, Kimberly, Michael, thank you all. What a help. My father-in-law, Victor, is tremendous, and we miss very much Melania's mother, Amalia. We miss Amalia, don't we, huh? She would be very happy right now, standing on this stage. She'd be so proud. She was a great woman, that one. Beautiful inside and out. She was a great woman. I want to be uh, the first to congratulate our great, now I can say, Vice President-elect of the United States, J.D.
and his absolutely remarkable and beautiful wife, Ushabez. And he is a feisty guy, isn't he? You know, I've said, go into the enemy camp. And you know, the enemy camp is certain networks. And a lot of people don't like to, sir, do I have to do that? He just goes, okay. Which one? CNN, MSDNC? He'll say, all right, thank you very much. He actually looks like, he's like the only guy I've ever seen. He really looks forward to it. And then he just goes and absolutely obliterates them. Say a couple of words. Wow. Well, Mr. President, I appreciate you allowing me to join you on this incredible journey. I thank you for the trust that you placed in me. And I think that we just witnessed the greatest political comeback in the history of the United States of America. And under President Trump's leadership, we're never going to stop fighting for you, for your dreams, for the future of your children. And after the greatest political comeback in American history, we're going to lead the greatest economic comeback in American history under Donald Trump's leadership. Thank you very much. He's, he's turned out to be a good choice. I took a little heat at the beginning, but he was, uh, I, knew, I knew the brain was a good one, about as good as it gets. And we love the family, and we're going to have a great four years, and we're going to turn our country around, make it something very special. It lost that, lost that little, and lost that little, uh, that little thing called special. We have to make it so. We're going to make this so great. It's going to, it's the greatest country and potentially the greatest country in the world by far. And right now, we're going to just work very hard to get all of that back. We're going to make it the best it's ever been. We can do that. We just, if we had to wait longer, I don't know. It was going bad, and it was going bad fast. We're going to have to seal up those borders, and we're going to have to let people come into our country. We want people to come back in, but we have to, we have to let them come back in, but they have to come in legally. They have to come in legally. Let me also express my tremendous appreciation for Susie and Chris, the job you did. Susie, come, Susie, come here. Come here, Susie. Chris, come here, Chris. Susie likes to stay sort of in the back, let me tell you. The Ice Maiden, we call her the Ice Maiden. Come here, Chris. Come here, Chris. Susie likes to stay in the background. She's not in the background. This was unexpected, but I just want to thank, obviously, President Trump for this journey. It was a great one, um, and he's a hell of a candidate, and he's going to be a hell of a great 47th president. And this team that we had, the best team, and, of course, even my boss, Susie Wiles, the best. Thank you. Thank you, and, and thank you, Susie. Look at her. She's shy. I've never seen her be shot before. Susie. Uh, they've been, they're great. Everybody up here is great. Everybody up here is very special. But uh, the Trump, yeah, who did you say? Oh, let me tell you, we have a new star. A star is born, Elon. The champ. All the work Elon yes. did. Now he's an amazing guy. We were sitting together tonight. You know, he spent two weeks in Philadelphia and different parts of Pennsylvania, campaigning. You know, he sent the rocket up two weeks ago, and I saw that rocket, and I saw it coming down. I saw it, it was, when it left, it was beautiful, shiny white. When it came down, it didn't look so pretty. It was going 10,000 miles an hour, and it was burning like hell. I said, what happened to your paint job? He said, we've never made a paint that could withstand that kind of heat. 
And uh, but I saw it come down and turn around. And it was, you know, it's like 22 stories tall, by the way. It looks a little smaller than that, but it's big. And it came down and down, and you saw that fire burning. And, and I'm saying, only Elon could do this. It must be an Elon. And I tell the story. I told it last night. I had a man on the phone. I had the screen muted, no sound. I was talking to a very important man, happens to be here. <laughs> and that very important guy, one of the most important people. And, I would say the country, actually. But, you know, I was president, and now it looks like I was going to be maybe president again, so I figured I could ask him to hold. So I asked him to hold. <laughs> and because, especially because you're going to be president again, they hold. So I took the phone down, and I'm looking at the screen. I'm seeing this crazy thing that's going around and coming down. It looks like it's going to crash into the gantry. And I said, oh, no. And I said, do me a favor. Do you mind holding for a couple of minutes? I want to see this. I thought it was a space age movie or something. I put the phone down. Bad part, I didn't pick it up for 45 minutes, and he was holding. But this spaceship came down, and I saw those engines firing, and it looked like it was over. It was going to smash. And then I saw the fire pour out from the left side, and I put it straight. And it came down so gently. That's and a metaphor for the world in America. That's how it's going to speak to And just like you hold your baby at night, your little baby. And it was a beautiful thing to see. And I called Elon. I said, Elon, was that you? He said, yes, it was. I said, who else can do that? Can Russia do it? No. Can China do it? No. Can the United States do it other than you? No, nobody can do that. I said, that's why I love you, Elon. That's great. And you know, when we had the tragic hurricane, Helene, and it hit, in particular, it hit North Carolina. They were really devastated. The water. Fields became like. Oh, not sure. There you go. Not sure. Marvel Engineering, you see Elon's space rocket just basically landing right there. Starlink. I said, what's Starlink? It's a form of communication. So I called Elon, and I'll tell you what he had, and it was very dangerous. People would die. They had no communication. All the wires were down. I called Elon Musk. I said, Elon, you have something called Starlink. Is that right? Yes, I do. What the hell is it? He said, it's a communication system that's very good. I said, Elon, they need it really, really badly in North Carolina. Can you get it? He had that there so fast. It was incredible. So, and it was great. It saved a lot of lives. He saved a lot of lives. But he's a character. He's a special guy. He's a super genius. We have to protect our geniuses. We don't have that many of them. That's right. We have to protect our super yeah. geniuses. I want to thank some of the guys. You know, we have. A friendly reminder, Biden recently tweeted something about maybe deporting Elon, claiming he was an illegal alien, which... That would be that would be the oh, again he's not but of all the people that are are here illegal that'd be the one they want to go after now the Venezuelan gangs are taking over a part, entire apartment complexes in places like Aurora Colorado and extorting rent for the people that are trying to live there up here today the U.S. Open champion he's uh, fantastic Alfred slightly longer than me it's a ball a little bit longer than me just a little bit Bryson DeChambeau is up here someplace <laughs> what happened to Bryson? Where is he? Bryson. Oh, he was shot. Notice Trump is being he very friendly, very nice. Nothing about his victory over the Satanists trying to he put him in prison. Even though he'll be back tomorrow trying to put him in prison, impeach him. Oh, look at him. Oh, got the murdered out hat. And yeah, keep us on air. We'll shut down next week, probably. Hey, Please get your murder out hat. The Alex Jones Can't do it without you. I mean, such, great you don't defend us. Fight. Standing up That's for you. Fine. Job. You might as well join the and enemy. I'll be honest. We also have a man, Dana White, who has done some job. And who helped open up the country with lockdowns. That's good. He's a tough guy. <laughs> So Dana started UFC and uh, came to me. Do you mind if I use your... Nobody wanted to give him a rinse because they said it's a rough sport, a little rough. And uh, I helped him out a little bit, and I went, and they said, this is the roughest sport I've ever seen, but I began to like it, and he loved it, and nobody's done a better job in 
sports. And, and you know, he's a very uh, motivational kind of a guy, what he does. He gets these fighters, and they, they really go at it. And it's become one of the most successful sports enterprises anywhere at any time. It's doing so well. I'd like to ask Danny just to say a couple of words, because people love to hear from him. And a few. Ben White said they're going to try to complete their code, which, of course, we were saying every five seconds, but Nobody matter. deserves this more than him, and nobody deserves this more than his family does. This is what happens when the machine comes after you. What you've seen over the last several years, this is what it looks like. Couldn't stop him. He keeps going forward. He doesn't quit. He's the most resilient, hardworking man I've ever met in my life. His family are incredible people. This is karma, ladies and gentlemen. He deserves this. Yeah. They deserve it as a family. It's our time of the rise of America. Rebirth. I, I, I want to thank some people real quick. I want to thank the Nelk boys, Aiden Ross, um, uh, uh, Theo Vaughn, Bustle with the boys, and last but not least, the mighty and powerful Joe Rogan. And thank you, America. Thank you. Have a good night. You've done well, Lord That Vader. is a piece of work. Do no, what must be it's done, really Lord amazing, Vader. Yeah, but most of Show all, I no thank mercy. The of hardworking Americans across the nation who have always run. been the heart and, and soul of this the endless civil really war. We've been through so much together, and today you showed up in record numbers to deliver a victory. Like, really, I probably, like no other, this was something, this was something special. And we're going to, we're going to pay you back. We are going to do the best job. We're going to, we're going to turn it around. It's got to be turned around. It's got to be turned around fast. And we're going to turn it around. We're going to do it in every way, with so many ways, but we're going to do it in every way. This will forever be remembered as the day the American people regained control of their country. Yep, the day we... Independence Day 2.0 is November 6th. So I just want to say that... That's when it happened. On behalf of this great group of people, these are hard-working people. These are fantastic people. And we can add uh, a few names, like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He came in. And he's going to help make America healthy again. Yep. This also shows how stupid Kamala Harris was. Granted, low bar, but I mean, Bobby Kennedy. He went to both candidates to talk to. He went to. He offered Kamala like, "Hey, you want to talk and maybe team up?" She didn't even take the meeting. Apparently, Trump did because he's smart. He makes deals. He's a businessman. Yep. Uh, you add that to the myriad of ineptitudes of Kamala Harris. That that'd be a, that'd be a heavy book if it were to be written. You're holding. Trump came out at. 127, like I said, I got the time zone wrong, but I just nailed it. I said, God tells me 127. I just was nailed. But not me, that's God. The little sign God gives us. We'll go to your calls as soon as Trump's done. But here comes Robert F. Kennedy Jr. We have more than Russia. Bobby, stay away from the liquid gold. Other than that, go have a good time, Bobby. He disarms the conservatives and stuff with that, and now we can get rid of the poison food and everything and the vaccines. Get that cheap gas. Yeah. Things that nobody else can do. Nobody else is going to be able to do it. China doesn't have what we have. Nobody has what we have. By the way, so nobody's the talking about Kamala pulling a Hillary and not giving a defeat speech and running off and hiding. I mean, this is great. I'm not putting down women. Women are great. Women I know are tough. What's up? Democrats just had a really bad track record of choosing the worst women on the planet. With Hillary, yeah, they forced basically forced Tulsi Gabbard out. It was actually a competent politician. They pushed her out, and then she joined the Trump train eight years ago. And now this running off and hiding. Never seen anything like Kamala that. literally I've ran off and hid. I mean, does she not realize how pathetic that looks? I mean, I was looking at it. I was watching it. They had some great analysis of the people that voted for us nobody's ever seen anything like that it came from they came from all quarters union non-union african-american hispanic american asian american arab american muslim american we had everybody and it was beautiful it was a historic realignment uniting citizens of all backgrounds around 
a common core of common sense. You know, we're the party of common sense. We want to have borders. We want to have security. We want to have... They'll start a fight with the Russians that beat Napoleon and Hitler for no reason and got 50,000 nuclear weapons. Kind of like... We don't have to use it. You know, we had no wars. Yeah. We had no wars, except we defeated ISIS. We defeated ISIS in record time. Yeah, world peace is insane. And, but we had no wars. They said, he will start a war. I'm not going to start a war. I'm going to stop wars. But this is also a massive victory for democracy and for freedom. Together, we're going to unlock America's glorious destiny. We're going to achieve the most incredible future for our people. Yesterday, as I stood at See, the globalists say, last stop fade him down. Campaign. Humans are bad. Humans are evil. We need to go away. You suck. Everything's failure. Trump's like, you're a winner. We're going to have success. The world, we can do everything with God. He needs to thank God in the speech. Maybe I missed him. <laughs> he needs to do it. Oh, God. To the job do that it. you've entrusted Complete to it. me. This is a great job. There's no job like this. This is... The most important job in the world. I just lost my audio feed. Just, just as I did in my first term. We had a great first term. A great, great first term. Did I, did I lose audio I or my headset? I by a simple motto. Promises made, promises kept. We're going to keep our promises. <laughs> Nothing will stop me from keeping my word to you, the people. We will make America safe, strong, prosperous, powerful, and free again. And I'm asking every citizen all across our land to join me in this noble and righteous endeavor. That's what it is. It's time to put the divisions of the past four years behind us. It's time to unite. And we're going to try. We're going to try. We have to try. And it's going to happen. Success will bring us together. I've seen that. I've seen that. I saw that in the first term when we became more and more successful. People started coming together. Success is going to bring us together, and we are going to start by all putting America first. We have to put our country first for at least a period of time. We have to fix it, because together we can truly make America great again for all Americans. So I want to just tell you what a great honor this is. I want to thank you. I will not let you down. America's future will be bigger, better, bolder, richer, safer and stronger than it has ever been before. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. There you go. Giddy up. That was obviously posted thanks to Alex Jones on the X Twitter account. 26.8 million views and 375,000 likes. One of the first ones coming from Burning Bunny saying this is exactly what we've been waiting for, uh, waiting on. Harris just got, what is it, Harris got them to hold off till after the election. 1.5 million on their way now because Trump is coming and the border will be closed. I'm on a massive caravan now. 139 likes though. I Love American News says the short version. is a picture of Trump says, I won, they know it, I know it, you know it. Got 3.6 thousand likes. One of the best ones comes from Melissa Mimosa says, quote, they insulted him, they investigated him, they impeached him, they raided him, they indicted him, they arrested him, they even tried to kill him, but he never backed down. This is our president. <clears throat> and that got a picture of Trump after the first assassination attempt. I have to think we have to clarify to delineate that because there's been so many. They got, got 6.1 thousand likes. I have, let's see here. Uh, okay. A lot more of those, yeah, a lot more of the same pictures of the same juxtaposition of all the things the deep state and everyone's trying to do against Trump. That's a, uh, let's see, Down J. Trump, well, parody account says it's the greatest comeback in human history, getting 1.1 thousand likes. Chuck Costello says right wave incoming, getting 902 likes. Prox is brilliant, it's a picture of AI image of Trump, it says happy now, poster board, getting 412 likes. Let's see here. Kara says the first time since this was wrong, and it's a picture of Lisa Simpson and then Kamala Harris. Where Lisa Simpson becomes president, got 862 likes. Yeah, they got a lot of pictures and uh, GIFs of Trump preparing French fries. He's working at McDonald's. It's legendary, and yeah, this will be in election. We will. I don't think we'll, well, no one's ever gonna forget it. It, it was epic, and pretty good. Except a pretty good victory speech. 
the only concern, I mean, the only concern is what's going to happen between now and his actual acceptance. That's where I start to get a little bit nervous. But let me know in the comments your thoughts, because as always, be fancy to hear what you have to say. Now, going over to the business blunder of the day, you have Optics Planet shipping a used item as a new. Now, this is interestingly enough, one of my first anecdotal experiences I think I'm talking about when it comes to the business blunder part of the podcast. Now, Optics Planet is, as the you know, good marketing as the name would entail, they're best known for selling optics, you know, rifles, even binocular, you know, pistol optics, all types of optical solutions. And this instance where it took me, and again, it's for a lot of people, it might not be a lot of money, for, but for me, it's a pretty, pretty good chunk of change to save up for a Trigicon RMR, and which is a, simply a red dot for a pistol side or, you know. And yeah, to me, it's a lot of money. I think they spent five hundred dollars. Took me a long time to have up for it, and I hit that business goal where I finally got pulled the trigger, pun moderately intended. And you know, I placed the order. Now there are multiple business blunders within this whole transaction. Firstly, again, they were one of the most successful e-commerce platforms for uh, rifle accessories. But first issue was I paid for expedited shipping, which I very rarely do. I think it's a th second or third time in my life I actually did that, and. Interestingly enough, unlike every other e-commerce platform, they don't count that, they don't actually count the shipping days until they pack it. And spoiler alert, it took them three and a half days to pack it. So I ordered it, the credit card was charged, and three and a half days after that happened, then it was packed into a box and it left, it left their facility, which was ridiculous in and of itself. No other, e I mean, if you were to buy it from Amazon, which... Again, this is kind of a hit or miss when a lot of people are concerned about buying because a lot of Amazon's kind of known for counterfeits when it comes to these type of high quality items. So there's always that roll of dice to Amazon, but shoot, Amazon, yeah, or you have Amazon Prime, I don't, but most people do. That's like, was it free one day shipping? And even with most items I buy on Amazon when I you know, occasionally just call for it, I'll get it within a couple, you know, three to four or five days. That same shipping, I had to pay a little bit extra on the optics plan for that. So that's my first little disgruntle was the discrepancy between how they describe the fast shipping. Because again, it was th over like three and a half days for them to actually put it in a box or to actually start the shipping process, which to me in e-commerce these days is really ridiculous. Again, first world problems, it's not, it's literally not, but if you pay for expedited shipping, I feel like they should be better clarifying their expectations with everyone and aligning everyone's expectations. Now, the thing I was more irate with, which again, if you're paying a premium for something that's brand new, Pretty uh, disappointing when it comes to be, turns out to be used and how they handle the situation. Now, the first time I did an experiment, I said, all right, what if I tweet about it? See, how long does it, let me time them. How long does it take to have their customer representative respond to my comment with a link to actually, you know, take me to, because I'm presumably they all have some type of page where you fill out a form and all that kind of pain in the ass stuff. And yeah, the first time I actually tweeted, uh, they uh, ignored, they actually deleted it. They I actually, and I did repost it. They did not delete the second time. So let's see. So the first one, got uh, four likes before they deleted it. And they actually took a screenshot of it and said, and then I posted it again saying, why did you delete my comment? So my comment was, hey, I have to explain it. Why do you sell used gear but claim it's new? It took me a while to hit my goal and be able to buy a Trish kind of RMR, and you sent me one that's clearly been used. Now, if you're not, if you're like listening to this, you're not seeing the visuals, in order to mount this um, optic to a, well, pistol or rifle, you need to screw it down. So there's the screw holes, and it's because it's seracoded, in this case, tan or flat dark earth. Well, one of the holes has clearly been worn, which, again, it's a, you know, high quality product. There's probably nothing wrong with it, but it's one of those things where if you spend, and again, Trish guy makes some of the best gear on the planet. It's, you know, high quality, made in America. But again, if you're paying, you can get them for a good discount if it goes used, but there's only a couple times in my life where I splurge. So to me, I wanted the product to be factory. I wanted it to be new. That's what I was paying for. That was annoying. So the first time they deleted my tweet, now the second time where I actually did a screenshot, the one they deleted, well, that one I only got two likes. And then they did respond to that one. They did say check your DMs. And I'll give them credit. That took them about 13 hours to get to that point. And then they did send them a message that gave me a link to their cumbersome interactive pay or the hundred percent fill out process. So then I had to go to their website. And again, sorry about that. Let me pull it up there. Now I can see it. There you can see the optic a little bit closer there. And yeah, the return policy, the return, it was a pain in the rear in terms of the actual, the interface on the website was awkward, cumbersome. Now, the actual process of just printing out a piece of paper, slapping to a box and dropping off at a UPS store, that's about the same parity as something like an Amazon or another e-commerce platform. So I'm not really going to fault them on that. That was, that was just fine. And they didn't charge me for shipping. And I do not believe there's a restocking fee. 
We'll see. Well, I'm going to roll the dice. And maybe they'll, I said, uh, you know, just do a replacement. Hopefully it's, you know, new and functioning perfectly flawlessly that time. But yeah, when, again, Optics Planet, when you go to all the forums, and it's so bad in terms of the reputation, which again, they are authorized reseller. So TrishCon, apparently they get all their stuff new from the manufacturer and they're represented from the manufacturer to resell their stuff. And if you look at some of the forums, there's an entire forum on Reddit called Optics Planet Sucks. And one of the number, the biggest category of complaints is people receiving TrishCon products that appear to be worn or used. So this is no, by no means an isolated incident. Now, my anecdotal experience, I've only ordered from this company twice in the past 15 years. Now, the first time, I forget, I, I got a TrishCon product from them. It was perfect. It was factory new. There's no wear marks on it. It functioned 100% perfectly. So again, that means 50% bad. But I mean, that being said, it's a very small sample size for me personally. But the fact that, again, it's a premium product that they apparently sold used, they're doing the right thing. Now, that being said, they could, but again, customer service, you should be going above and beyond. You want to make them happy. And I'm surprised, I'm surprised they didn't offer free overnight shipping or anything like that. So I can get the new product, you know, ASAP. Especially because I paid for the, you know, fancy shipping, which again, that was an, I didn't pay for overnight shipping. I paid for the, um, I believe it was a three or four, uh, the five day. And the one product I got within like nine days. Because again, they didn't count those three days where it took them to pack the product, which again, to me, I think that was the biggest, one of the biggest annoyances in terms of my not being aligned with expectations, so to say. And of course, having a used item to me is, and again, this is all first world problems, but with a competitive online e, e, e-commerce platform where there's only a couple major uh, resellers when it comes to the authorized resellers for this product. I mean, competition is tight and to have this type of viewer's experience is just unpalatable and just ridiculous. So I gotta say, uh, again, you know, the ultimate of first world problems, obviously it's not a necessity. No one needs these things. It's a, you know, a toy that I worked for several, you know, a long time to get to, but so I gotta say Optics Planet, this, the misalignment of expectations and selling a product that's clearly used. I gotta say this, certainly the business blunder of the day. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you can click that button, I'd really appreciate it. Also, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment. It's a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.